with you and for you and for your family and for this whole world but you, please don't leave watch it all the way to the end so we can pray okay let's do the intro song Brad, can i do the countdown of course you can joe go ahead one two three hit it so good okay before we get to the clip we have some new viewers so Joe we want to say hi to them and also their mother Kristen hi Landon hi Zayden hi Candom hi Kristen thank you guys so very much for watching this channel okay you guys go and come and let's watch this video clip okay last week what we did, we left off. The people wanted a king. They wanted a king to lead them in the battle. They didn't want God to lead them anymore. I know, Brother Harry. I don't know why they would do that. I don't know either. Well, I do know is that sometimes people look at what other people have and then they think that, okay, I want that too. I want that. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be good for us just because other people have it. Now, remember, the first king's name was Saul, Brother Harry. Then it was David. Then it was Solomon. Okay, they were united as one, the nation of Israel. Then Solomon died and his son, Rehoboam, took over. And Rehoboam was not smart at all. He listened to the wrong people. So there was a big division that happened. 10 tribes went to the north following Jeroboam. And then this became known as the Northern Kingdom called Israel. Then the remaining two tribes in the south made Rehoboam their king. And the Southern Kingdom was called, do you know Joe? Judah. That is correct, that is correct. Now what happened to people, they weren't listening to God. Now, here's something, they asked for a king. Now Israel, their fall came because all the kings in the Northern Kingdom of Israel were wicked. They were idol worshipers and they forsook the commands of the Lord. They didn't listen to God and so, the Assyrians came along and they destroyed the Israelites in the north. Then they led them away as prisoners to Assyria, which is located in what is now northern Iraq and southeastern Turkey. So Israel fell to the Assyrians. And then it was time for Judah. Even though many of the kings in Judah were wicked, there were about eight kings in the southern kingdom of Judah who were good. Eventually, the Israelites in the southern kingdom disobeyed the Lord and disaster was coming their way. A king named Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the southern kingdom and took them out of their promised land and led them into Babylon. And Babylon is the southern part of modern day Iraq. Now see, this is something that I find so fascinating, Joe is that some people think that these stories that's happening in the Old Testament is in some far, far away land, and it's not. We can get on the plane and fly to these places. That's just how close they are. So this is something that is so very important. We wanna know that these places are real and they are here today. So let me explain. The vast majority of the Old Testament took place in the region we know today as the Middle East. This region covers three of the seven continents in the world. Although primarily in Western Asia, the Middle East also encompasses parts of Northern Africa and Southeastern Europe. There are some present day countries that even existed in biblical times although 
Some now have different names. Let me ask you something. Do any of these countries sound familiar to you? Iraq, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, Syria, and Turkey. Yes, these should sound familiar to us. And if not, you're going to read about them in the history book. Most importantly, you're going to read about these locations in the Bible. Now, here's another thing I want to share because this used to confuse me when I was younger. The term Hebrews, Jews, and Israelites are all referring to the same person, a nation that came through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No matter if they are referred to as Jewish, Hebrews, Israelites, Jews, Israel, they are all the same. Descendants of Abraham. You can use this term interchangeably. Okay, Joe, let me ask you this question. Joe, what is the letter after A? B, brother, here B. Okay, very good. What is the letter after I? J, brother, here J. That is correct. Now, what we can do, we can put the A at the top and the B at the bottom, and next to the A, we write Assyrians, okay? Then with the B, we write Babylonians, okay? Then we can put a dash by those two, and to the right of Assyrians, we can write Israel, and to the right of Babylonians, we can write Judah, brother, here, that's the J you're talking about. Yes, that is so good, Joe. Praise God, brother, here, I'm learning, I'm learning. I pray that the boys and girls are learning too. Yes, Joe, I believe that they are. And glory to God for that. Now, remember King Cyrus? Yes, brother, here, he was a Persian king. He was in charge of the Persian empire. Yes, he was the king of the Persian empire. And he came and he took care of A and B. He conquered both the Assyrians and Babylonians. Yes, Joe, he did. He and his men, they conquered them. Now, we learned that they were in captivity, remember? 70 years. That's right. So after 70 years in captivity, King Cyrus said, okay, Israelites, you can return to the promised land. That same promised land that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was only by God's hand that King Cyrus allowed the Israelites to return to their homeland. Now here's something that's just a side note, is that the Persians didn't stay a world power. What happened was that the Greek empire came along and conquered the Persian empire. Well, brother Harry. But it's not finished yet. Then the Roman empire came and conquered the Greek empire and they became the new dominant world power. This is something that is really important to know and some of these things you can find in the modern day history book that talks about these things. So it's something that's very important. So you see the children of Israel they were so happy that King Cyrus gave that decree that they could go back to their homeland. And we know that that all happened by God. But hey, God is a loving God. He forgave them. Even though they had to stay 70 years in captivity, he didn't forget about them, did he, bro? Nope, Joe. God does not forget about his people. And so when we make a mistake, we want to call out to God. Even before we make a mistake, we want to pray to God and say, help us, God. Okay, there you have it, the end. Wow, boys and girls, that was an amazing story. Yes, that was pretty neat. The king of Persia, King Cyrus, he gave a decree to tell all the people to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild. And Brother Harry, I want to find out more. Joe, I'm glad that you want to find out more because after we finish with the genealogy of Jesus, we're going to travel backwards and we're going to go back to the Old Testament and we're going to learn more and more. We're going to go more in depth to that. So thank you very much for watching the Old Testament Express, God's Virtual School. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and please share with someone because this is valuable information. And this information will take you from here. Ooh all the way home to heaven with God. Man, 
I'm looking forward to being with the God who loves us and who gave his son Jesus to die for our sins. But let's go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you so very much for blessing us to be able to have this opportunity. We're thankful that you have given the Bible to us, that we can read about the history of our ancestors, starting at the very beginning when you created this earth for us to be able to enjoy. Thank you so very much for guiding us through this series. We pray for the viewers. We pray for their families. We pray for this world. We know it's so very important to keep praying to you and keep trusting in you. Thank you so much for Jesus who made all things possible. It's in his holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen, Brother Harry. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless you. Bye.